The Open Access Smart Capture project is um, a project that's been developed at the National Theatre. Uh, it's a speech following software engine that is driving an always on closed captioning service. The closed captions are displayed in an augmented reality pair of glasses and we've worked closely with our partner for innovation Accenture to develop those in the user interface. These are the glasses, um, they're manufactured by Epson, um, they are the Muverio BT350s. They're sort of a flexible headband like this and then inside is quite a simple menu that we've developed with Accenture with a limited number of choices of distance, colour of text, um, positioning of the text, but because what we found even in the earlier stages of the trial is some people like to stick the text across people's faces, other people like it more like subtitles on television, um, some people like it up in the air, some people like it scrolling, so we've given a certain amount of choice but we've tried to make it really simple so that you can just get on and watch the performance as quickly as possible. And then there's a small controller um, uh, which is effectively a mouse pad and if you tap it uh, the menu pops up and then you make your selections you can have whatever colour font appeals to you at the moment I'm looking at bright green and um, and then um, once you've made your choices the menu disappears and you just sit back and um, enjoy the performance. I think augmented reality systems are really really exciting and they are very much the future and applying this kind of technology to solve a problem and to offer people choice, for me, that's really the best way to apply technology. The moment that was really exciting was when we broadcast to the glasses and we broadcast text. Olivia Coleman and Olivia Williams, who had just recently finished uh, production of Mosquitoes, and they very, very kindly agreed to do a three and a half minute excerpt from that. The test period now starts. It's one year where we're exposing the technology that we've developed to a test user group of around 50 people. And we're starting on a production called Beginning. We're then going to use the system on Pinocchio, and then it's going to be used on Macbeth in about six months' time um, in the Olivier, which is our largest and, and possibly most complex auditorium to, to use the system in. It's a technical offering, um, and part of, the, part of the thinking is to, is to initiate a response. So um, if the users, for example, if none of them use pink, then we'll probably remove pink as an option. It's extraordinary how people respond. They go, oh, I do like it in green, or oh, I love pink with an outline. And we are going to gather up all of that information and then make an informed choice from our user group of what the menu should look like. What's really important um, in a live environment is that you are anticipating what's being said. So what's being said is, is displayed as a caption, whether it's open or closed, at the same time as, as the dialogue has been spoken. What the speech following software does, which is distinct from speech recognition, is it already knows what's coming up because there's a script and as long as the actors stick to the script there or thereabouts, the speech following software listens to what's going on on stage, combined with a number of other signals that are used as markers and we use all of that information and we, we pull it all together into a file and we use, and we use it to broadcast um, the captions. Accessibility has always been important to me, particularly given the lack of choice um, that access users have. They can't come to any show, they can't sit anywhere in the auditorium, and to me that's not ever been quite good enough. The key with access services is to have as many options as, as you can available. So we've reinstalled loops into the um, Littleton Theatre and we're about to reinstall a, a loop system into the Olivier Theatre. We, we offer infrared services, we're going to offer the always on closed caption service and the always on audio description service um, and we also are going to continue to offer open caption performances. So it's about choice and we're all, at the National, we're all really passionate about making sure everyone can come to the theatre. It is all about just going, mm. this is it. Yeah. And, you know, it's been a technical, yeah. it's been a technical offering um, that's been developed um, technically, mm -hmm. and now we're saying, now it's yours, yeah. now tell us what you oh. want. Coming to the theatre um, for access users can sometimes be a rather clunky process. It is really, really important, particularly given that it's quite a complex piece of equipment, that it works straight away and people have a really, really seamless experience. One of the interesting aspects of this project is we have no idea what the potential is in terms of how many people will come along each evening. But because we're not doing one or two performances or three or four performances,
performances that are captioned, we're doing maybe 70 performances that are captioned. Um, it perhaps smooths out the number of people who come to, to each evening. But it's one of the great unknowns of this project. And one of the exciting things about it is there are so many unknowns about what the potential is. The first phase of this project is the closed captioning. Um, but the speech following software, and which is effectively the engine that drives that system, we're also going to use for an audio description service. Um, the National Theatre provides audio description, sort of two or three per performance, per production here, and in six months' time we'll be integrating the audio description um, into the same system so that we broadcast audio description and closed captioning for every single performance. In October 2018 we will, we will launch it properly at the end of the trial um, and then we'll make it clear to all of our customers that this, this option exists for them to come along.